compared to other, this has been a big year for open world games Mm -hmm. and really kind of a big, you know, decade for open world games to a point. How does Fallout 4's open world compare to others for you coming into it uh, blind, walking into this? I feel like Fallout 4 is, it's as enjoyable as you want to make it. And I think like this game has been kind of to the levels of GTA where you kind of own your own developer. Like, you have to find your own fun for it. Mm, you mm. develop your own quest, even even if it gives you a quest, like, you make you make a different objectives yourselves as a player, depending how you want to play. Like, you can build up your settlement if you care or you don't care. Um, you, can de- you can play a certain way, like, being definitely, like, the different types of weapons that you choose to craft or whatever. Whereas, like, in Dragon Age or whatever, like, there's a, there's a goal and there's a story and you want to complete that story. In GTA, you can just fool around, do whatever. In Fallout, I feel like... You, there, you are like you said from the very beginning. The reason it really doesn't teach you much is because it does want you to feel like you're you're in this world and you're creating. You're you've been thrown into this. You know, you're 200 years old. Someone stole your baby for some reason, and you have you have to just develop a sense of humanity again and figure out how it is to build a society and how you choose to do that is really interesting. And one of the things that or I, how to not do that, how not to do that, you completely <laughs> ignore all of those things. And I, I think that's why I have like an, if I were to think about my love hate relationship with this game, where at the beginning I was like, I don't know why I'm playing this. If it's really frustrating me. And then you finally get like a groove and you're like, Oh, this is why like it, it's pretty awesome to defeat 20 ghouls in a row because you, you got, you got the flow of, it and you have your, your character's pretty, specked out or you can choose to you know like go and like just harvest a lot of things and see what you I don't know iguana soup if you want to like create that or whatever <laughs> it's it's fascinating and I think I definitely understand I don't understand the the big level yet of hype just because I haven't played the game enough to really get to like the really like big objectives that like really like put you to the test except that one legendary ghoul thing that like won't stop following me around the map because I'm stuck in a certain level <laughs> um, but I can see like you once you like actually immerse yourself into the game like you why it it keeps drawing you back like even though you're frustrated and you'll put the controller in like oh but i know that if i figure out these like three other ways to maybe go about this mission i'll get it right and i that reward of like it's okay that you failed we'll just keep bringing you about this challenge you'll figure it out is kind of what i guess is what everyone is drawn to sure and something that you're running into also um, and that, you, by the way, you're not alone. Like uh, the, it was, it was, it was interesting to me. You know, I think, I think Dan Stapleton, you know, who reviewed the game, myself, Tal, certainly Jared, and uh, and probably Steve Butts. Like we all had the similar experience of being like Fallout, like super veterans who are listening to people who haven't played as much Fallout all around the office be like. This game is impossible. This game is ridiculous. <laughs> it's so frustrating, you know. But for us, we were like, yeah, like if you're dying ten times in an area, that's Fallout's way of saying you're not you're not supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and that's yeah. the thing is that Fallout is one of the few games, and this is just to link it back to the open world, which is what we're talking about. Fallout's one of the few games that does not um, it does not craft its open world in a in a way that is purposefully um, laid out so that you won't run into. Right. Uh, things that that can kill you. Like the whole point is like, yeah, you can go up, down, left, or right. But what you find after going, if you go left, might just kill you. Um, no, yeah, I, I make this just, comparison too yeah. often, but it, it's that Dark Souls, Legend of Zelda, uh, original Legend of Zelda, yeah, right. lineage. We're just like, yeah, why don't you go try? Yeah. You mm-hmm. see what happens. See you what know, happens. Um, I mean, it, it, there's very few places that you just can't go at all, and it, it's and it's good to know, like, like again, it's the love hate, like I. I hate that I encountered that and it killed me, but at least now I know that's a challenge that later on I can go to and figure out, yep. hey, now that I know that this you know, this gun is really good and I spec'd it out and I have enough aid or whatever, because that was a really big problem for me. I did not collect enough aid to help me to get to point A to point oh, B. Oh, okay. Well, um, now that I know that I uh, you know, I got the right tools to do this, now I can face it and, and I did it. And now it's for, that was great. Now I can do another one and that accomplishment that, you've, that I don't really feel like you get from a lot of games like Uncharted where it is point A to point B. And you're like, well, yeah, that was hard. But I knew I was kind of going to get through it. Where it's just Fallout, you don't know. You might have to give up on an objective, and that's that's okay. Yeah. You just go on to another one. That's the thing. And you're right. What you're saying there is like totally true. Like, that's okay. And, like, that's the mindset that um, that you have to eventually come into with mm-hmm. the game. Because um, if you – I can say to anyone, like, pretty much, if you play Fallout and you, um, you interpret being stopped in your tracks or dying as a failure – 
then like you're probably not gonna have a very good time mm-hmm. with the, with you're with the game. Have a bad time. Yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> this is true though. Like if you look at it, it's like, well, I went uh, you know a hundred yards to the to the to the west, and a thing killed me in one hit. I, I I'm either terrible at this game or I don't understand it or you know. And you and if you equate death with failure, then. You, you know, you're. I'm not saying you're playing it wrong, but like you're, you're probably not in the right mindset to enjoy what the mm-hmm. experience is. Like the, the idea is, I went west, I got killed, so um, maybe I sneak around that thing. Maybe mm-hmm. I wait until nighttime and I sneak around that thing, or maybe I draw something else over there that it'll fight with, and I let them fight, and then I run, and then I go mm-hmm. by. Or maybe I just outrun it because I have that much stamina. I, I think that's why the, the saving yeah. ability allows penalties for failure to be so small because yeah. failure is a teaching tool. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, some of the sometimes the way I've died has been the most entertaining part. Like, <laughs> that's true. I, I remember I was exploring this building, and I opened a door to just one other room, like a hundred rooms in a row, and there was a raider standing there with a fat man, and it just <laughs> boom, <laughs> shot me in the face. And I was like, like how, why? I thought it was, you get for exploring? Like, I thought it was really funny. It like, is really funny. It's great. Why it's, nukes? Uh, yeah. It's it's like, why like, nuke? No, it's like stumbling into the Revenant, and was it was it Baldur's Gate? Or the Demi-Lich. Or the Demi-Lich. Oh, the Demi-Lich. The Demi-Lich. The Demi-Lich. Ah! Yeah. That's the one oh, I always think of from Baldur's this Gate. Is, this is post-Demi-Lich stress disorder. Um, I will say, like, yesterday when I was playing this, like, late at night, and I was pretty tired, so I was already in that, like, frustrated zone. Like, I I was going to an objective, and, like, I was just going straight line, and then, like, this Codsworth-looking thing, just, like, it had the little ghoul sign, so I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be able to beat it, and it killed me in one hit. And usually when I got to those points in the game, I would just be like, well, fuck this game, and I was sorry. I had to screw this game, That's and I would all just, right. just write in the note right here, I just, editor. <laughs> there we are. I would, just, um, write, uh, I would just walk away. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. Now I've gotten to the point in the game, like, no, I now have a different strategy. Like you were explaining, right. like, I'll do this other thing instead, as opposed to just giving up and being like, well, I screwed that one up, so I'm just going to have to do another one. Right. So it's definitely like now you get in a flow of like, oh, no, the game isn't punishing me. It's just teaching me that there's different things to look out for yeah. because so, uh, that's a real world. <laughs> so drawing, uh, drawing from that, Esmeralda, um, what's your verdict on Fallout 4, having played it for some time now? Zero what do you think of it? Um, I think... I think I'm going to continue to have a love-hate relationship to it just because I am still learning as a newbie. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of things I wish I knew at this point that I don't feel like I, I've grasped on from the little quiz that we took. But I definitely now feel like it's a contender up there for, like, fall, like Fallout 4 is an open-world game that I want more games out of. I want to be able to, like... It, it, it's like old school games that it doesn't really teach you and that's and you learn and you you feel rewarded and I feel like I've played enough like Rise of the Tomb Raiders that I enjoy but I don't really feel like I did anything <laughs> like I don't feel like I really like that's what I was gonna say is like the distinction for me is like it's not that it's not teaching you it's just that it's teaching you through making you do it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right like you wanted to talk about that Retronauts uh, example which is a great one there's this other awesome video called uh Sequelitis, why Mega Man X is like one of the greatest sequels ever. It's by this guy, Ego Raptor. Shout out to Ego Raptor. I need to watch this. Great video, 20 minute video. Honestly, I watch it maybe once a week. I've seen it a hundred times, but it's so good. And it talks about how game design teaches you to play the game. Mm-hmm. And the example mm-hmm. is a lot like the one you use for Mario, where it makes you do it, and by doing it, you, it teaches it to you. Death is one of those things in Fallout that is used as a mechanic to show you how and why to approach different things in different ways, mm-hmm. right? And it's not, like, that is that's that is how it should teach you. I don't think, actually, that it Fallout would be better if it was more sort of direct in how it taught you. Like, you guys play Arkham Knight? Mm-hmm. Yep. The whole game, there's like, hey, press this button to do this thing on the screen, and I'm like, I did this a hundred times, I know it, but mm-hmm. it's still popping up. Mm-hmm. That, I think, is... That's a crutch in how it teaches you to play the game. Like, I don't think good game design has to do that. It should do it by making you do things. And I think Fallout does that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Yeah, and like uh, to kind of extrapolate further on that, the, the Arkham Knight uh, example, and to be clear, I do like the Arkham games, and I think that I the, their, their combat is... Is uh, is very satisfying and enjoyable, but uh, but like you said, very autopilot. Like mm-hmm. you, the, and the thing is, that, like you said, there's always a prompt on the screen. And the, if you go further with that point, that means that 
the way they continue to ramp up the challenge is by introducing enemies that require you to press other buttons that they also tell you mm -hmm. which to do. So it becomes about like identify this enemy. I always press these buttons, and that's how that's the only way I can beat that enemy. Otherwise, he kills me in one hit. I think you're, you're raising a legitimate point. Yeah. I also think that we were earlier on this very same show complaining that. Bethesda didn't tell us what buttons to press enough. Well, so, um, like I said, I want to make a distinction yeah, because right. there should be, there's a difference between something being too like dense and difficult to figure out and just being plain obtuse. Exactly, and that's that's you know? what I was I wanted to make sure we yeah. we drew a, a firm determinator between those two. Right, because right. like for me to use the example of getting out of the power armor, that's something that like. I couldn't have figured that out by looking at the screen or by interacting with the systems. Like, that's just pure trial and error. I had to look it up. And I think that is one example of where it could have been better. But for, by and large, for the most part, I feel like Bethesda and f with Fallout 4 specifically, most of what you need to figure out or learn can be done so by, tr by trying things out or by exploring menus and looking through things and uh, giving things a shot, you know? And, yeah, and to Which further... Is a good thing. Yeah, it is. And to further clarify... Um, you know, it's not that what Arkham Knight does is wrong because it's communicating clearly the buttons you can press to deal with the situation, to do a thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's more that um, in in that case, it's like you have a challenge. There's only one way you can overcome it, and it's by pressing the buttons we tell you to. Um, and that's a very, uh, to me, that is an actively less interesting experience than uh, here are the tools you're going to use them in whatever order you use them yeah. to overcome the challenge. No, I, I am so with you on this. Yeah. Uh, actually, particularly in regard to Batman, I, I I know Origins is the weakest game, but the one moment most people talk about loving in that was the one I liked the least for that very reason. I was just tired of fighting Any? it. Uh, no, the uh, the uh, boss fight with uh, with Slade. I, I just mm. like I oh, am yeah, I so. Like it's either. just a big QTE event. I, yeah. I, I I don't want to do this. And uh, no, I I definitely like like you said from the very beginning. I do think that it could Bethesda could have done better to tell me that that like to give me the basics so I can run off on my own. So that way I'm not immediately frustrated from yeah. the very beginning and I don't want to give this game a shot because. For, for people that have played this for long, you already know what to expect. You already know what's going to make it fun. Right. I have no idea. So if you, from the beginning, don't give me the tools to at least get the basics down, uh, you might lose me before I get to that point of like, oh, this is why there's so many things to do and there is that learning perspective and I am going to have to die about 50 times to understand that, that you know, VATS or whatever, how to use it properly. Yeah. So but tell me how to use VATS first so that way I don't screw it up. Right. So are you, you going to keep, oh, I'm, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and to, just to wrap that whole, like, I have to put a bow on what the three of us have said there on that is that absolutely tell me how to use the tools but then don't tell me what to use the tools on sure or where yeah. i'm supposed to use them mm -hmm. that's i i really like how you sum that up yeah. that's that's very good <laughs>